This is how you can see the best of Japan by traveling the country in a camper van. Japan is famous for its bullet trains, but if you're traveling outside of the major cities, maybe it's not going to get you so far. You might find yourself waiting for a bus that only comes once every hour or so, or you might be trying to go to this beautiful place, but you just can't get there by public transport. We arrived in Japan in 2019, and for the best part of that time, we've been hiring vans and traveling all around the country. Four years later, and we've got our own van, and want to share with you how you too can hire a van and travel around the country on your next trip here. First things first, before you hop on your plane here, you want to get an international driver's permit. This is pretty simple. We've left a link down in the video description so you can see what the process is for your country. Some other things that you might want to know is here in Japan, we drive on the left-hand side of the road. And while the road signs are in Japanese, rest assured there's also English. Great, you've got your permit. Now it's time to... There are many companies in Japan that provide English support when hiring camper vans, mainly in the major cities like Tokyo and Osaka. We've had personal experience with two of them, both on either end of the budget spectrum. First up, CamGo camper van. We hired from them for a couple months doing a big trip around Japan. Low budget, just a car with a bed in the back. There's no sink, there's no seating area, but they do provide camping equipment like tables, chairs, and a portable stove. On the other end of the spectrum, my parents came and they hired from Japan campers. They have a wide budget range from low to high. My parents took the decked out version. That was for around 20,000 yen per day, but there's a bunch of other companies and they roughly fit on the chart like this. Links to all of them in the description, please check them out for yourself. But no matter which one you choose, you've made the right choice because traveling in a camper van is the ultimate way to be flexible and travel at your own pace. There's two extra things to know. Some companies will give you a tablet with Wi-Fi and you can use that for internet and Google Maps. And the majority of them probably won't have a shower or a toilet. What? But don't worry, we've got you covered. Let's talk about how to spend a night in your big shiny van. For places to stay, there's generally three options. There's rest stops, free camping, and paid campgrounds. For rest stops, probably the most famous is Michi no Eki in Japanese or roadside stations. Just look for this sign. It's a place where you can stay overnight for free with toilets, but they're usually a lot more than just a big car park. They're usually a tourist hub for the area where they have tourist information, they sell produce from local farmers, and there'll usually be some restaurants and cafes. Probably the main downside to Michinoeki though is you can't be getting out all your camping gear and equipment outside your van. And it may also be a little noisy as they are popular places to be. The second option is free camping. This might be just car parks next to places like beaches, rivers or parks where there's a toilet open 24 7. This is a little bit more like stealth camping though so make sure that you're not overstaying your welcome and don't be getting out all of your stuff again. The other thing is there are campgrounds which are free. These are usually in much more countryside areas they could be a little bit harder to access but you can definitely get all your stuff out here and have a relaxing time. One other thing though is the toilets could be a little bit rudimentary you may even get squat toilets. So guys I got something good for yeah. The only ones they have Damn! are the humble Japanese pit toilets. They're not fun and they're not easy to use, but uh, if you gotta go, you gotta go. For free campgrounds and roadside rest stops, there is a free map that has been put together that you can put into your Google Maps to see where they all are in Japan. So we'll link to that in the video description down below. And the third option is paid campgrounds. These usually have a lot more amenities Things like toilets, showers, there might be a campground nearby, you'll be able to fill up your water, and if you are drowning in garbage from not being able to get rid of it in Japan, this is a great place to do that. Campgrounds have two sites, tent sites and auto sites. Just be careful, auto sites are the only ones where you can bring your car or van onto the site. If you're trying to see if the campground you're going to has auto sites and you're finding it a bit difficult, we recommend using the term auto kyampujo in Japanese in Google Maps to help you find it. We'll leave all of these useful Japanese words in the video description below to help you search for things in your maps. So that's your three options, but Roy also mentioned you're probably not gonna have a shower in your van. So, Japan is great, you can use onsen. Again, we'll leave the Japanese word in the video description, but basically this is a great place to relax after a long day of camper vanning and having fun. 
one other place that could also be useful is Manga Cafe. One of the biggest ones in Japan is called Taikatsu Club. This is super useful as you can just pay for a space in the cafe and there's usually free showers, there's a free drink bar, you can relax, get some Wi-Fi, it's great. To sum up, we usually stay at free places most of the time and just once every few days book into a campground. When we came on our first big trip to Japan in a van, we thought, oh, we're gonna have the most amazing nature campground experience and be cooking every single day. But honestly, that didn't happen. <laughs> Japan is just so dang convenient. You can stay at free places with no prior planning or reservation needed. There's so much convenient and cheap food in Japan and just use the onsen for a shower. It's really great. It's really that easy. Whew, well done, you've done the hard work. Now you can fly in, pick up your van and start your trip. But the second you pull out of that rental store, you're gonna have to start thinking about these next points. First of all, fuel, gas, petrol, whatever you call it in your country, how do you get it? Well, here in Japan, there's two kinds of petrol stations, self and service. Self is as it sounds. You pull in, you pay at the pump, you can change the pump language to English and you can use international cards. You pump your gas and then you leave. Service is when you pull in and the attendant directs you, they pump your gas for you and then you pay. Sometimes language can be a bit of a barrier. So when my parents came, we made them these little language cards which they could use to show the attendants. If you think that this might help you, we've left a link in the description where you can download them. The next is tolls. Usually if you're going to be traveling a long distance, you're probably gonna end up using a toll road. But here, they're pretty damn expensive. However, even if they're expensive, if you're in a real chonker of a camper van, chonker of a camper van, you're probably going to want to use them. The local roads here are just so narrow and bumpy, it's going to make life a little bit difficult. My only tip here is that when you're in the rental store, get an ETC card. This just makes using the expressways quick and painless. You don't have to worry about getting your cash out or the language barrier between you and the person at the toll gate. You just pull up to the purple gate and you just fly straight on through. So by this stage, you probably already know how convenient Japan is. The last point we'll talk about is coin laundries. And by this point, you've probably guessed it, Japan has made it dead easy. There's coin laundromats all over the country. You don't need your own detergent. You just pull in, they're pretty easy to use and you can get clothes washed and dried. Again, if you're struggling to find them, we're going to leave a Japanese word down in the description, which you can copy and paste into Google. We are so excited for you to get in your very own van and go and see everything that Japan has to offer. Do let us know down in the comments if you have any other questions and go and check out our other videos for inspo for your trip. See you next time. Bye bye. Say fares. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow seamen. No. <laughs> well, please ignore my husband. For rest stops, just look for this sign. There, you can stay at free. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, I think I've done everything. <sighs> Laundry is just. Mwah.